we've inherited a public health crisis, especially with children who get driven from place to place who no longer um, get themselves to school by themselves. In many cities, the streets, uh, they are about 40% of our land area. We've got a, an erosion of that soil, uh, that soil. The North American dream that we all grew up with that has lost its luster and it's been replaced with a new and very potent North American dream which is about living in a neighborhood where you can walk to buy your groceries, where you can take a bicycle, where you can have access to transit, where you, all the things in your daily life are actually close. My first challenge to you is let's think about streets as public space. It is in fact collectively owned by all of us streets, which we now call complete streets, where yes, we do have private automobiles, but where the hierarchy has been reversed. And I want you to think about streets as being not primarily for transportation, and not primarily for the transportation of cars, but as having much greater civic roles to fill. Those have more to do with economic development, community identity, and social, even social functions in the street. A key tip-off is how kids get to school. And I came upon this schoolyard in Stockholm and I was just delighted to see all these tiny bicycles because that just speaks volumes about how the parents and the kids in that neighborhood, it was an urban neighborhood, feel about the safety of the streets in their neighborhood. Uh, and just to let you know that if you build these bike facilities, people will come, people use them. In Portland, we've increased our mode share significantly for bikes. So, uh, you know, what, what do people love about Calgary? When you ask them, what do they love? They almost always say the river valleys, the escarpments, the parks, and so on. Uh, the fact that you can catch a trout in the middle of the city. Think about how we actually bring nature in, both in terms of incorporating the natural network in Oregon, for, in Oregon and Washington, for instance, where we have environmental um, we have environmental acts that require us to think about stormwater, how it flows, where it flows, how it's treated before it gets to the river. And where you're really looking at the purposeful design of engineered and natural systems and working with them in alignment together uh, so that they are providing multiple benefits to us in terms of ecological services like stormwater management, um, uh, clarifying water, biodiversity, places to play, uh, uh, productive landscapes, uh, agriculture in the city and so on, all kinds of things that, that, uh, that these areas can provide. You would think that you would want to keep something like that because it's so special. Uh, <clears throat> wetlands, riparian areas, regional corridors, not huge patches of natural vegetation, but nothing else can uh, provide that, those functions. To get there, what's really exciting from a professional standpoint is all the old hierarchies are breaking down. Um, this, this is what my work day looks like. I'm standing around a table with architects, landscape architects, economists, ecologists, artists, uh, social animators, uh, people, hydrologists, people from all different fields collaborating and working together with flattened hierarchies, with lateral thinking, breaking out of uh, all of the old stereotypes. Basically, the, the concept resulted in 800 kilometers less development and, and a 30% efficiency uh, uh, improvement in efficiency and in infrastructure. Those are billions of dollars. So this isn't chicken feed and chump change. This is important stuff. Uh, we, we can have more compact, livable communities that are respectful of natural environments, uh, and there's lots of room to develop. There's lots of area, no shortage for now. This process of transformation, which is fascinating, which is exhilarating, is not a sprint. It's a marathon, but it's cumulative. And what it means is the stewardship of this has to extend beyond any single political administration. It has to be something where civil society, folks like yourselves, are engaged 
and, and can't rely only on the politicians. Uh, for the first time in, in many years, I think, I, I, uh, I realized that, there, that there's a, a body of people uh, that are really uh, thinking very carefully about this stuff. We know we've made mistakes in the past, so let's move on. Thank you.